Howdy folks, Roach here. This is a, another in the series, in the recon series. Uh, this one is called uh, Checkpoint, uh, and that's December 19th, 2018. Uh, that is today. From time to time, uh, I like to do checkpoints. Uh, I'll s explain to you what those are. Um, let's get into the presentation. Um, just go out to the pool here. Hang on just a second. There we go. Now the reason I do these checkpoints is, for me, uh, I always see life as sort of like being on a rubber raft in the middle of the ocean. <clears throat> There's nothing to see. It's just you out there in the middle of nowhere. And, and it's, sometimes it's hard to tell that you're actually moving. Uh, there's no landmarks. There's nothing out there. And although you might be moving out on the ocean, y you can't see these things. That doesn't mean that you are moving at all. So without a guidepost, without a checkpoint, if you will, y y it helps to know how far you've come. Okay? So this particular checkpoint, this is you know, maybe a, a departure from, from my normal stuff. Um, but I think it's actually important because it's valid. I, 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 I get these people that say, well, you know, hey, you know, this is all talk. You know, w what are you actually doing to actually help? I mean, I, I don't see that, you know, all I see is you, you complaining. And, you know, I, I generally don't complain. I, I like to offer, you know, constructive uh, material uh, to help people think in different ways and get into different places and this this all goes to my objective and my objective has been to restore the rights of every man woman and child on this planet you know it's pretty simple um, it's simple to say however that's that's up to us so <clears throat> what I'm going to relate to you is something that happened back in um, 2007 uh, it all was just part of something that happened. In, in, in 99, 1999, I was uh, fairly well adjusted to the system as it exists right now. Um, I had a nice house. I had, you know, I had a truck, a boat, a dog. I had a wife. I had, I had just about everything that somebody could ask for. I had a great job. Um, and... It was at that point where I, I actually concluded that, hey, you know, this is what it's all about. Uh, I, I'd actually reached that place where I can say, you know, I, I've, I've achieved the American dream. I mean, I wasn't rich or uh, by any means, but uh, I, I was comfortable. Uh, I had a, a sufficient distraction. Um, it, it was a good. It, it, it was. It, it was good. So. Here I was, looking at everything around me, looking where I was, and I, I just simply ask a question. If this is the objective of everything that we're doing, you know, as Americans, as, as people, I'd have achieved the American dream. There it is. So, so the question in my mind was, am I happy? I wasn't sure, but I had to conclude no. None of that made me happy. That begs the next question. Next question was why. That was the start of the most profound transformation. I've had transformations in, in my life before, but this this was indeed the greatest transformation. It would eventually lead me to discovering the law surrounding the Holy Grail. And that occurred uh, in, in 2006 uh, in Hong Kong because this path led me there. Um, so I was completely transformed. Absolutely transformed. All, all, almost like the old me just died and didn't exist anymore. 
and I discovered this simple. It was so simple I'd overlooked it my entire life. I mean, it, it, and 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 it was a, that itself was a culmination of something that occurred when I reached the age of consent when I was 12 years old. Read the Constitution of the United States. I mean, it was 1976, right? The Freedom Train came came through Colorado Springs, and I dressed as a Minuteman, and and in fact, my dad made me a woman uh, a a wooden uh, uh, musket, right? And I brought it to school. Hey, and everybody thought it was great. Right? It was, had a wooden barrel on it. I mean, it, it was great. He put a little insignia on there and engraved it himself. We still have the thing. I mean, it's it, it was beautiful. And, you know, I dressed in, in in the type of, you know, blouse and and pants, you know, of that age. And, you know, shoot, I went downtown and we saw the Freedom Train and I saw the Liberty Bell and I was all excited, you know. And it, it's that point where I took the parchment constitution off my dad's wall and I, I read it and, and shoot, I, I was in Cub, Cub Scouts and, you know, got my civics badge. So I, I'd read the constitution and, you know, I read the declaration. I've read the founding documents and they seemed fairly reasonable to me. I really liked it. I was excited about it. Um, my dad was a soldier and, and, um, now I, Shoot, I, I I was happy to be an American. I, I was happy that I was in a place where that was the law of the land. Although I was 12 years old, I read the words. Seemed reasonable. I looked around and I didn't see anything that was in those documents actually occurring. Sorry, folks. Uh, we must have been on a, on a different program because I didn't see it. There were all kinds of people talking about it. But I'm 12 years old. I said, you, you know, the emperor has no clothes here. So, you know, I said, okay, what, 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 don't, I, what don't I understand? This was 76. I mean, the, the, the whole rest of my life was just looking at this train wreck. It just got worse. Years and years, over and over, it got worse and worse and worse. And, and, and I, I really didn't understand because I, you know, I said, okay, what am I not understanding here? Well, that's what happened in 2006. I actually put the pieces together and I figured it out. And, and, and it basically led to fundamental law. Right? So, folks, man, get this. I know how one accesses the Holy Grail. I mean, this is the thing, the King Arthur thing, the divine grace and protection. How do you realize that? How, you know, it, it is it is how one stops being demoralized, reestablish that communication, right? I lived my whole life excommunicated. At that point, I was hooked back into the mind. I was, I, 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 and I understood clearly that everything in my life actually brought me to that singular point. I mean, it was absolutely magical. It was absolutely wonderful. It was so easy. And I wanted to tell everybody, so I got out there and, you know, I said, wow, I really have the power. So we came back from Hong Kong to, to the United States and I thought, here's my chance. Now I, I, I can really actually have a positive impact, okay, make some changes that, that actually, that, that everybody can agree on. So I set about trying to do that, still naive. Okay, now, understand at this time, I was still, uh, you know, e e even though I understood, the, you know, the basic fundamental law, I was still trying to reconcile the fictions of law that exist right now with that base fundamental law. And some of my terminology was still confused, right? Uh, you know, I, I, still, I, I still thought that the concept of sovereign citizen was actually valid. Uh, uh, later, I, I really do the research and find out that, oh, wait a minute, you're either sovereign or you're a citizen. A, a, a citizen um, is granted privilege and liberty underneath a contract that he enters into, right? A social contract, okay? And a, a sovereign, right? And, and people treat each other civilly as a function of that, um, that, contra uh, of that contract. Now, a sovereign must afford courtesy to other sovereigns. 
Okay, and you and you, you can't be sovereign if you're a citizen. If you've bound away your fundamental rights in order to enter into that contract, you cannot be sovereign. Okay, this is something that that uh, many sovereign citizens do not understand. Unfortunately, many sovereign citizens believe that this is a means by which uh, they can take advantage of the people that are still bound to that contract. You don't do that to folks. Okay, and a lot of and 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 a lot of people that do call themselves sovereign citizens, they know enough of the law to be dangerous, and they are dangerous. Uh, sovereign citizens out there have been responsible for shooting uh, uh, police officers. Um, they've been, uh, uh, you know, uh, guilty of fraud. You don't do that. Yeah, of course that system is a fraud, but you don't utilize aspects of that system to gain advantage. Okay, you walk away from it. You leave it alone. Okay, you 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 you're not there to create an outrage. You're not there to beat the poor people that are still bound and locked in that in, in that. You're you're to help them. You're to help them free themselves. That's your responsibility as a sovereign. Okay, there are many things that a sovereign cannot do. Okay, they just cannot do it anymore. It's not a matter of choice. It just it's eliminated from your ability. You cannot do it, and it's not a choice. It's just one of the things that just is a natural outgrowth uh, of uh, that ordained sovereignty uh, uh, process. And it is ordained. The highest authority has to grant it. And if it's not granted by that highest authority, then they are not sovereign. Right? For instance, let's look at uh, uh, Pope Bergoglio. Okay? He is the sovereign. You know what? What are they doing? I mean, the Catholic Church now is is in this this massive upheaval. I mean, the leadership in there just—they're not comporting themselves in a moral way, and he at the head is is making excuses for him. That is not the behavior of a sovereign. I'm sorry, he's not sovereign. Anybody who would say, "Well, you know, I have some doubts," you know, about whether or not God actually exists. No sovereign would say those words. A sovereign knows that there is a higher authority. That higher authority plays a role in every instant and moment in his existence. He might call himself sovereign, but he is not. I would be glad to help him reconnect such that he can can truly be uh, uh, in, a, in, in a place to truly commune and intercede on the behalf of, of, of the rank and file. But right now, he's part of the problem. Okay? So, here I was, all excited. I'm wanting to go and, get, oh, I had this wonderful tool, this wonderful weapon. But it's really not a weapon. And I wanted to change something. I said, oh, here got the power now let me help everybody and you know back then i i hadn't gone through 20 years right i hadn't gone through well you know 12 years of of figuring out that hey wow even though i might know i can't force it on anybody against their will I mean, over the years, a handful of people have actually figured out the material sufficient to actually go through the same process that I've gone through. And then there's so other sovereign, ordained sovereigns walking around on this planet, but most people wouldn't even know that they were there. It's not an easy life. It's it, it, it's fairly lonely. It's it's a narrow path. There there isn't a whole bunch of people at this party. Um, we all need to be there. But right now, there's there's way too much fear. There's way too much distraction, and and and, and this demoralization it, it has it, it is effective. The conditioning is effective. It is working. They're succeeding here. They're succeeding. I mean, it's sad, folks. I, I mean, I, I I don't know if it's absolutely horrible, or or if it's funny. It's not a funny that one can laugh at, however. Okay. So, back in the summer of 2007, 
uh, this is after I filed my uh, uh, Declaration of Sovereignty and Independence with the courts. Okay, so I was ready. I had everything. In, uh, I had everything. You know, at least I was protected. I'd, I had remedied to the law, and and at which point that gave me a lot of, let's say, courage in order to to proceed. So, what I decided to do is let's see if we can actually get at least the Colorado government back under uh, lawful control, uh, specifically law, uh, control by by the population itself, so that we can uh, somehow. Uh, I, you know, I didn't expect, you know, profound, you know, night and day change, but if we could just start working back towards uh, a, a lawful constitutional, you know, framework, uh, then then everybody would be a whole lot better off because now, you know, people's rights would start being protected again. Um, so I, I thought, well, hey, you know, l l let's do this. A at which point... Um, you know, I, I, I drafted a letter and 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 thought, well, hey, um, let's let me do this. I mean, I have the lawful authority now to command who I thought at the time were my representatives, okay? And 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 so I did. All right. Uh, let me see if I can. There we go. This is Senator Morgan Carroll. Okay, I met her in the summer of 2007. Okay, I had a letter that I would want uh, that I wanted her to represent. Now she was my representative. That meant that under my authority, she could present something that I thought was important to the government. That was her function as a representative. Okay, I had the authority. She was a public servant, and she was to do as she was commanded to do. It was a power that is in the Constitution, both in the state Constitution of Colorado and in and in uh, the Constitution, the U.S. Constitution. That's normal. Okay, they are public servants, and they do that. Now, I wasn't asking for anything unreasonable here, and I'm going to read that letter to you today. And you'll see that there's nothing in it that, that's particularly mind-blowing. Okay? So, uh, she, is, uh, she was uh, a senator of the Colorado House District 36 from 2004 to 2008. And in 2007, that, that's when I met her. Uh, she, uh, later, after that, she became senator from Colorado in the 29th uh, Senate District from 2009 to 2017. Um, after that, she's now the chairwoman of the Democratic Party in Colorado. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, she's, uh, she's, a, nice, she's a nice lady, and, and, and I, I met her uh, a number of times. Um, and she, she taught me something actually that was very, very important. Um, and I, I, I do appreciate that. I don't like what she taught me. And I don't believe that, uh, you're going to like it either. Okay. So I, uh, you know, t to get, to get to it. All right. So, um. This is this is the the forward uh, to some of the things in there. I said in the summer of 2007, I asked uh, uh, Morgan Carroll. Uh, she was a member of the state. Uh, uh, she was a member of the. Uh, she was a representative of the state of Colorado to read the following message to the joint Colorado legislature, with the governor and the judges attending. Now, I'll tell you a little bit more uh, uh, about this, but suffice to say. Uh, let me read the letter as as it was drafted, and and this is what I wanted her to read, okay? And I contacted her through emails, and you know arranged a, a meeting, and then I attended one of her uh, uh, one of her meetings with the public, you know, and, and it was town hall meetings. That's what they called them back then. I don't I don't know if anybody does that stuff anymore, but uh, you know they invited the public, and then she had the press there, and and she did all that. But this is the text of the letter. Okay. Now remember, 
I was still working on some basic principles and I was still looking at contract being being you know the the actual mechanism by which they gain a lawful authority over us right and it and it is a valid way of actually uh, compelling people to performance um, that's not what's in place right now uh, but it had the beginnings uh, of that understanding and it was really important you should it, it should be fairly reasonable it, it, but let, let it speak for itself, and I'm begin reading it right now. This is what the letter read. I said, and, and, and mind you, now I wanted her to read this to the Colorado government. Okay, and, and you just keep that in mind. Okay, I said, dear public servant, all human beings in the course of their lives are faced with a choice. A human being can take responsibility for themselves their lives, and their actions. Likewise, a human being can submit to the authority of another by relinquishing their rights, giving up their power and voice. The latter is to be, the latter is to be a slave that is dependent on the mercy of another who is not, found, not bound to consider the slave's best interest. When one is a slave, they cease being a human being and become merely property whose useful life is determined by their ability to produce a profit for their master. We must each individually make this choice. I have made mine. While the warmth of our mother's womb is still with us, we are pricked, prodded, named and classified. We grow up and are taught to believe the lie that we are merely vehicles of interstate and international commerce. We believe we are each a person, an individual, a resident, or motorist, not knowing that this has legal contractual implications that will wholly dominate our lives until we die. We have forgotten what it means to be a human being with rights, powers, and voice endowed to us by our Creator. We are no longer human beings. We are slaves, property, cattle, and our masters have determined that we have outlived our usefulness. We live a lie. All around we see this truth. We have been made entirely dependent not on our own ability to sustain ourselves, but on mer the merciless pittance we are begrudgingly offered. Soon our masters will withhold our sustenance, and in ignorance we will perish. It is the age-old question we face, live free or die. I have made my choice. If our choice is simply to die, then can we accept the crime and responsibility that we also condemn our children to the same fate against their will? The Uniform Commercial Code is a lie. It is a civilized system of law. It is a contract to slavery. We have been fooled into submitting to this terrible contract. We falsely believe this code applies to a human being. It does not, nor can it apply to a human being. Not surprisingly, nowhere within its pages does it define specifically within that, uh, within that it applies to a human being. It uses terms like individual, party, person, corporation, etc., which are merely legal nonsense to describe interstate or international commercial entities. This, va th uh, this vagueness is intentional, and we are left to decide in ignorance what is what. That alone, by its very nature, invalidates this code. Second, it establishes by default that we who walk this planet are not human beings, but a straw man fiction. We are slaves unless we say otherwise. We would not be outraged if we were judged and treated, for the purposes of the law, as mass murderers until we declare otherwise. 
A child molester, perhaps? Are we to be guilty until proven innocent? All contracts are voluntary, and ignorance of the law is no excuse. But what of those who had a duty to protect and warn us, and, and in treason turned away? Is treason a strong enough word? Any law or code that is, at its heart, unconstitutional has no power. The UCC is such a code. For this crime against humanity to be allowed to operate within our nation is unforgivable. For this code to be permitted to operate in my sovereign state is intolerable. Shameful. And is just cause for defiance. The UCC is only one of a myriad of frauds that have brought our state and our people to the brink of ruin. We no longer engage in commerce as it is lawfully recognized. We merely occupy ourselves moving around the master's property, pretending to trade and pretending to own that which is not our property, to fool ourselves into thinking that a privilege is a right. There can be no profit in this. We no longer use lawful money as, it, as we have been tricked into using IOUs instead. We have been ignorantly given away, giving away our rights, our land and our treasure for a piece of worthless paper. So pervasive is its use that we have tricked ourselves into believing that our sovereign state is no longer our property. We have traded it under a voluntary contract for nothing, a fiction, and a colorable, ethereal lie. The sovereignty of our state cannot be sold, traded, stolen, or given away. Even if we could sell it, our pockets are not filled with silver or gold, and our state treasury is filled only with worthless paper and electronic nothing. The contract is between the people and those who are our servants. We cannot right those treasons of apathy and greed that those that came before succumbed to. We can assume ownership of that which has always been ours. It is a uh, it is not a matter of taking back, as it was not taken from us in the first place. It is still here, and it is still ours. What was taken from us was our ability to see this truth. We believe a lie. We believe that we must bow down to the federal government, the state government, or our local government, merely because we breathe. It is a lie. We are human beings. And we need not bow to anyone. We are not fictions, slaves, or property. More importantly, we are Americans and sovereign citizens. Uh, and sovereign, citizens of our state, whose power and rights flow as gifts from our Creator and are protected by a trust. The Constitution of our sovereign republic of these United States is that trust, and that contract is still in force. There is but one question we each must ask ourselves. And it is a choice we must all make. Your choice can be found in this simple question. Are you, my public servant, worthy of my trust? And will your future actions prove that you treat your duty to the people of our state with the seriousness, care, and honesty 
and all at a level I have, uh, all at the level that I have the power to compel you to meet by contract. From a human being, with all respect and grace due, another human being, I demand, as it is in my power to demand, your answer. Sincerely, Roger Kent Poole, Aurora, Colorado, Tuesday, July 31st, 2007. All right, so let's see if I can get rid of all of this stuff. All right. Now, my wife and I, after several email exchanges with Senator Morgan Carroll, uh, we arranged a meeting with her um, and to talk about what it was that I wanted her to do. And, and at the time, she was, she was interested, at least. And I don't know if she was trying to dissuade me or what, but uh, we arranged a meeting at the La Peep restaurant, uh, and I believe that's close to Havana and Iliff in Aurora, Colorado. And I don't know if it's still there, uh, but that's that's where we went to meet. And it, it was my wife and I, we went there and we talked. And, you know, I explained to her the difference, you know, between money and legal tender. And, you know, I told her what it was, and, and, and she recognized it. And, you know, and... Uh, I, I gave she, she had read the letter. I gave her a, a copy of it, and and then I I asked her that question. I said, "Are you my public servant, worthy of my trust? Can I trust you as my public servant?" And, and she answered, and I quote, and my wife was there. She said, quite honestly, I don't believe you can. Now you think about that. Okay, what did she just tell me? She said that, hmm, one, I'm not your trustee. Why? Because I can't honestly trust her. Is she my public servant? No. She's not my public servant. It was at that moment I determined that this is not my servant government. Whose servants are they if they're not my servant? That was in 2007. And can you imagine the impact of that had she actually done what it was that she that I asked her to well I mean uh, I think like you know maybe uh, some weeks or mo a month had gone by and she was holding this town hall meeting and and you know okay I showed up well and I sat in the front row and she knew who I was of course she looked very uncomfortable now we sat through the whole thing me and my wife and because and everybody got a got to ask a question now I she had the press there. Okay, in deference to her, I didn't want to embarrass her in front of the press. Okay? I, I needed her to do something for me, and I, I wasn't really interested uh, in, in, in making things particularly hard for her. So I, I cut her a break on that. I, my question, and I can't even remember what it was, it, it, it had something to pertaining to some of the nonsense she was talking about um, you know you know some some important issue that 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 you know mind-blowing issue that really nobody remembers or probably nothing was done about anyway all right um, so I asked you know some mundane little question a point of clarification uh, but I didn't ask the question hey wh why aren't you gonna read my presentment I could have asked that question right in front of the press 
I had the document there with me. Now, my wife thought it was kind of curious. She'd gone to the restroom, and somebody immediately followed her in there and waited until she had gone. Okay? Now, look, folks, I've been on the radar since 1999. These people know who I am. Make no mistake. Okay? So, it was afterward, we're walking down, and I, uh, walking down the hallway, and I, I, you know, I confronted her. I mean, you know, I, you know, get her in her face. I mean, I'm not a, uh, a Laura Loomer by any means. And I ask her, I says, uh, when, when can I expect you to, uh, you know, read, read the presentment? And that's when she said, I, I don't know what you want to do. And, and her voice became shrill. And I looked at her, and I looked in her eyes, and I looked at her face. This woman was completely terrified. Terrified. I didn't think that there was anything in the letter that was particularly unusual. But she was terrified at me forcing her to read that letter. Wasn't going to happen anyway. Why? It's not my servant government. I, I you know, I, I mean, I had the Roach Forum, I had the website, I was putting all this information out there, and this is something that I've talked about in, in videos before. Um, and, and, you know, here, here we are. I, I at that point, I, I saw the terror in her eyes. I, I, and I, I, I just backed away. That's that's when I realized that that we had a bigger problem than just incompetence. Okay, what's going on in our in what we call our government it, 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 it isn't incompetence, folks. These people are clowning on us. We need to recognize that we're in a real dangerous spot here because um, uh, I don't think they'll us around anymore. Why would they? Can can we act responsibly? Uh, do, do, do we know the law sufficient to where we can comport ourselves? I mean, you know, again, I mean, you know, if Donald Trump hands us control back to uh, of the government... Are we even close to being in a place where we can we can use that gift responsibly? I don't think so. I, I, I don't think it's a problem. I mean, I, I, you know, in 2012, I mean, I moved down to Texas, ended up being one of the people that were targeted, you know, because, you know, I was considered a conservative. I'm, I'm really, in that sense, I'm, I'm not a conservative by a traditional definition. I, in fact, there's no label you can really put on me. I, I won't accept any label, um, right? Uh, but I was viewed as, you know, uh, somebody that could cause problems. Why? Because, you know, I saw Barack Obama who he was before he was even elected and said so. Guy didn't like me, right? And Lois Lerner at the time, <laughs> who do you think they were going after? They, they made my life heck. Absolute heck. All right? I mean, you know, that that's where we're at. That's where I'm at. And uh, so I go to federal district court, and I brought 12 people. Well, you know, I, I was trying to get the people of Texas to say, hey, you know, hey, somebody did some pretty terrible, corrupt things to me, and I think we, we as people here in Texas should take care of it. Right? So I had this big thing. I put it out on Facebook. I, you know, invited everybody to come out to Bledsoe Park here in Leander. We were going to meet and talk about things that we could do in a peaceful way to actually bring about a change and then hold people accountable. One lady showed up. Nice, wonderful lady. I, I won't say her name on here. Um, one lady. That's Texas. So... Really, is it Morgan Carroll's fault? No, absolutely not. She's given the people exactly what they want. It's what we want. We want to be slaves. We're going to take all the freedom and all the power and all the voice, our freedom of speech, we're going to take that freedom and we're going to choose to be slaves. 
We're going to choose to be property. Whose fault is that? That's not Mark and Carol's fault. No, absolutely not. That's our fault. We're, do we, we're doing this. Oh, yeah, we might not like it. We go out in the street and we protest and, you know, we set things on fire. And and then you're not realizing the cops, um, you know, what do they what do? They do? I mean, you, know, you got livestock that's out of control. What do you do? The livestock that's out of control. Well, you beat them. And if that doesn't work, you put them down. That's reality, folks. If you want to stop being livestock, I, I can help you. You're, there'll be some things that you give away. Things that you're going to have to stop doing. It's not a matter of doing something. It's just stopping, you know, just not doing certain things. You don't have to think a certain way. You just have to stop thinking the way you're actually thinking. It's a change of perception, right? Why are you here? Well, quite frankly, I mean, I use this metaphor. <laughs> Nobody rides a boring roller coaster. You're in the adventure part right now. Right? This is the adventure part. Real danger. Right? And it's real danger. All right, let's see if we can get back to the living room here. All right. I just wanted to show you just a small part some of the things that I've been doing over the course of 20 years. I mean, I got hundreds of videos out there. Uh, they're not good videos, folks. All right, I, uh, you know, some of the uh, uh, I, I'm just not good at this. Okay, there are people that are certainly more glib than I, and I have a little trouble. Okay, I have a little trouble doing videos, and 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 the reason is is because I don't. I'm not talking to a human being. I'm talking to this computer, this machine. Although there are human beings out there, it, it creates a huge problem because I get no feedback. If I'm using an intuitive process and you're sitting across from me and we're eye to eye, I'm getting all the feedback, all the un, you know, all, all, all the intuitive signals, not just the physical ones, but there are other things too. And I respond to that, right? They ask questions. I respond to those questions. I'm certainly more glib, but in this format, I don't have a being. Well, there is a being. It's all downstream. It'll be in the future when you actually watch this. And I might say something, right, that just resonates with that one person. You know, and many times in videos, all of a sudden something will come over me and I'll have to say something and I have no idea why I'm saying it. It isn't like six months later, some guy came back and says, you know, you said this. And I felt that you were talking directly to me. It resonated with me so, so much. Thank you. Thank you for that. And me, I, you know, I'm going along and I said, trying to figure out, well, why in the heck did I just say that? Right? So, so it's difficult for me to, one, stay on topic, and two... Uh, to use this kind of kind of venue. I mean, one of the things that I thought would be kind of actually interesting is, is me talking face to face with somebody while the camera is on and I can move them through this particular process and we could all, you know, everybody at home could actually watch how I how I uh, uh you know, for want of a better uh, better word, minister or testify and witness uh and show people concretely how to move through the process. Um, I, I think that that would be very useful. Except I'm sitting here alone. Nobody comes to visit. I get a few phone calls once in a while. But everybody's doing their own thing. You know? They, they they think that hey well hey you know the, the thing is going to change only only by by force really you guys try to use force your masters are going to beat you into submission kill you get rid of you probably take your kids rape them they don't care you're animal you're not human and quite frankly human itself is akin to a monster it's the being that makes it all happen and nobody is being anymore. They're physical. They're not spiritual. 
This is a living church, this. It is the flesh body wherein the spirit dwells. You're not this material. You're something special. This physical material, that's your property. It's the property of the being. If you think you're, you're flesh, you're a man or you're a woman, that's a suit. That suit's disposable. All right. So hopefully this video has actually helped you. Um, and, you know, I want people to understand that I am working. I'm. Tr I, I've been trying to get people to uh, to actually, you know, sit down and act, truly understand what it is I'm trying to say here. What I'm pointing at. It's important. It's powerful. If you ask people who have actually gone through the process, they're changed beings. There's no aspect of their lives that, ha that, lives that haven't been affected by the material and the idea of simply changing their perception. It doesn't require you to do anything. N nobody else can even know you're doing it. It's a secret journey. You just come out completely different. Then, then everybody around you say, wow. You're completely different. What did you do? And then you're going, uh, uh, I didn't do anything. I just changed the way I perceive things. I got information that caused me to look at things in a completely different way. All right. and, and and for those of you that have been positively affected, the, the, and, and there's a few of you out there. I mean, I, it isn't a throng. I mean, you know, I, I don't, I don't even know if it's a hundred people yet. I mean, I've, I've been doing this, for, you know, for twelve years, folks. I mean, this, I, I'm not new at this. Okay, I, 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 I've, I've. Hours and hours and hours, days and days, months and months, years and years, decades and decades of trying to do the same thing or trying to bring something to, to somebody, trying to, you know, create that little spark to cause people to simply look at things differently. And it's the key to happiness. I mean, absolutely. 2006, July 4th, 4.48 a.m., I had the answer. You know, why am I not happy? Wow. Changed everything. Knowing the reason. That was it. Right? And although some of you think that, you know, I'm, I'm angry and, and stuff like that. No, no. Inside I am not. Oh, the flesh suit. Oh, it throws a fit. But inside? No. It's zen. It's zen. Okay? So, I, I know you folks out there, you, you, you want to... Uh, uh, you know the folks that have been affected by by the material. You want to, uh, you, you like to uh, thank me, but really I can't do any of this by myself. Okay, uh, I, I'm not the one that's actually really sacrificing here. Okay, there is another. This woman in this picture. Okay. This is Ilian. Okay, this is my wife. Okay, I call her Beebs. For 24 years, this woman has been key to providing the knowledge, the, the suffering, and the patience so that I could be who I am right now. And she still sacrifices. If it weren't for her working as hard as she does right now, I wouldn't be doing this video. It is by her that all of this is manifest. She is the one that is making this happen. So if you want to thank someone, don't thank me. Don't do this for me. I'm just the servant. 
Thank her. She's the one that's making this possible. Thank her. And I mean really, thank her. Okay? That's her name, Ileon. It's not Elaine. I know it looks like it's close. Right? The I and the A is, is backwards. Her name is Ileon. Okay? That's her Facebook. She's Permi1 on Facebook, and she's Permi1 on Twitter. Thank her. She's the one. She's special. You'd love her. I'd love her. Ha love to have her on. This is our wedding picture, by the way. This is in Colorado, the Edelweiss restaurant. We thought it'd be, you know, me. I hated to go to weddings. Sorry, folks. I, I just uh, hated to go to weddings. So I decided. We decided. Well, what would be the best wedding setup that we could do? So we got married at a restaurant in the back. It was a nice place, right? It's a German restaurant, right? So uh, you know. We set our I do's, you know, everybody, they, everybody was sitting at the tables. You know, we set our I do's, got that out of the way. Then, then we ate. I gave the help a thousand dollar tip. They liked that. But that, that's what it was. I mean, there was no going to a reception, driving across town. Um, you know, everybody had something decent to eat. And, and, and it was like a get together. I mean, it wasn't hard. I mean, it wasn't difficult for people to to show up, and it, you know, I, I wanted we wanted it to be nice, and I and I think it was nice. I and and for those people that attended, you know, I I think they remember. But that was a long time ago, folks. We're getting old. We're not going to do this forever, right? One of the ways, though, however, you can thank uh, thank Ileon, um is get on her uh, Facebook page, Twitter, thank her. Do that for me. She'll, she'd be surprised. She'd be surprised. She probably doesn't know I'm doing it. I know she's milling around back there. I don't. I don't know if she she knows what it is that I'm doing. But uh, but thank her. Get on her page. Uh, get on her Facebook. I mean, she sells Avon. Uh, she is she is quite established in her own right. Okay, but she just sort of sits in the back. Okay, but thank her. All right. Uh, the, the other ways that you, you could thank her is uh, um, you can go to roach.com. There's a donation button. Okay, it's been hard on us. Okay, uh, we've given up all of our treasure, folks. We don't have much left. Um, and uh, they don't make it easy for us. They really don't. They, they don't want you to know this. It gets in the way of their entire program, you know. Um, they want you as livestock. They don't want you walking. They don't want you as them. That's why they use the law against you, right? You know. And and if, if you want the information on the Holy Grail, it's here. It's here. Send me a message. You know. You should find me. I'm public. I'm R Pool. On on, on Twitter. Okay. Facebook. Roger Kent Pool. Watch the video again. Yeah, if you put in Roger Kent Pool, you'll see me. There's a there's a coat of arms with a white snake on it. That's me. I answer. You, you can even find my phone number. Man, I got all this contact information out on the web. Plain as day. <laughs> I get so few communications, it's not even funny. However, the communications I do get from the people that I do know, priceless. All right, folks, I'm Roach, and uh, we will talk to you later. Take care.